Hi guys, it's Nigel here. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe during these tough times. Um, I've been asked by several GPSTs to do a podcast focusing on the statistics and Kate's plots from an AKT perspective. If you haven't had a look at the a little challenge that I posted, the lockdown stats challenge, do visit the Facebook page, uh, Mentor MRCGP, and I've also set up recently a support group to run alongside the page where I can post resources which are relevant to your AKT, CSA, web-based placed assessment, and also additional COVID resources during this tough time. And my hope is that uh, you guys are going to support each other on that group, contribute to it uh, up until CCT and beyond that. So feel free to join the group and use the resources. So to understand how to extrapolate risk from a case slot, you first need to understand risk. So this first slide is looking really at the equations around risk. And remember that in the AKT, you've got a scratch pad. So it'd be very uh, strategic to actually write down all of these equations as soon as you can on that scratch pad. So when you come across anything to do with risk, you don't have to worry about actually remembering the equations because they're just there. Risk is the probability that something bad is going to happen. So it's about adverse events happening. And it can only be calculated if you're moving forward. So it's a perspective measure. Risk can be given as a percentage or as a decimal form. And the way in which we work it out is the number of bad things that happen over the total number of people that we're following up. So that's an attributable risk, an absolute risk to an individual. If I now apply a treatment, my hope is that I'm going to reduce that risk, in which case I've got two groups. I've got an absolute risk in a control group and an absolute risk in a treatment group. My absolute risk Reduction is the absolute risk in the control group, which is also known as the control event rate, minus the absolute risk in the treatment group, which is also known as the experimental event rate. Treatments sometimes, though, don't reduce risk. They can increase it through having um, adverse events of their own. So all treatments come with side effects. And if this is the case, then actually, rather than looking at an absolute risk reduction, we've got an absolute risk increase, in which case we're no longer dealing with an ARR, we're dealing with an ARI, which is given by the equation ART minus ARC. It might be also useful for us to now talk a little bit about relative risk, because you're going to come across this in the AKT. A relative risk is not an attributable risk to an individual. It's a comparison of risk in one population or one group compared to another. So it's actually a ratio. So relative risk and risk ratio are interchangeable terms. If I'm looking at the relative risk of an event in a treatment group compared to that a control group, then it's given by this equation, the ART divided by the ARC. The relative risk reduction of a treatment is given by the equation 1 or 100%, depending on what your risk is, is in terms of either a decimal or a percentage minus the relative risk. So it is how much a treatment reduces risk relatively in one group compared to another. We have other measures to inform our patients around risk in the context of numbers needed to treat and numbers needed to harm. If my treatment is reducing risk, I can use it to calculate the NNT, numbers needed to treat. The number of people I need to treat over a period of time to prevent one bad thing from happening. So it's given by the reciprocal of the ARR. So if your ARR is in a percentage, it's 100 divided by that. If it's in a decimal form, it will be 1 divided by that. However, if your treatment's actually causing harm, we now have numbers needed to harm rather than numbers needed to treat, in which case we are now using the ARI as opposed to the ARR. So the numbers needed to harm, the reciprocal of the ARI. Because relative risk is a ratio, if it equals 1, there's not going to be a difference in terms of uh, risk between the treatment and the control groups. OK, so let's uh, use this now to extrapolate risk from a Cates plot. Now, a Cates plot is a diagrammatic uh, representation. It's a visual plot of risk. And when we start thinking about risk, what we're interested in, again, it's only about bad things happening. If we took a population of 100 people and uh, said 
okay, 20% uh, of these people are going to have cardiovascular events over the next 10 years if we don't do anything, then what I'm setting there is the absolute risk in the control population. I'm now going to apply a statin uh, to this group for 10 years. Um, if we start with the green faces, okay, 80 people aren't going to have a cardiovascular event, whether they are on the statin or not. So actually, I'm not particularly interested in those people because what we're interested in is risk. It's about bad things happening. 15 people are still going to have a cardiovascular event despite being on a statin. So these are encompassed by the red faces. In other words, I now have an ART. These people are on a treatment, but actually they're still going to have a cardiovascular event. So that's our now ART. I am going to save about five people, though, from a cardiovascular event by them being on a statin. And that's encompassed by the yellow faces. So I'm actually reducing risk by the fact that I've saved five people, which is the absolute risk reduction. Now, the fact that Kate's plots are based on 100 people, this allows percentages to be calculated really, really quickly. And the next slide will help you extrapolate risk. If you follow these equations and write them down on your scratch pad, you won't go wrong. So the ARC, or the CER, is given by the number of red plus yellow faces. The ART is given by the number of red faces. The ARR is given by the number of yellow faces. And our NNT is the reciprocal of our ARR, so it's 100 divided by the number of yellow faces. If I now apply this to the question, and you may want to give this a go again, now that I've got everything down written on my scratch pad, it becomes relatively straightforward in order to get the answers. The absolute risk of having a cardiovascular event in patients not on a statin. So what they're asking me to calculate there is the ARC. Okay, it's the control event rate, patients who are not on a statin. That's given by the number of red plus yellow faces, which is 20%. The absolute risk of having a cardiovascular event in patients on a statin, that's asking me to calculate the ART, which is the number of red faces, 15%. The absolute risk reduction is the number of yellow faces, which is 5%. The number needed to treat with a statin to prevent one cardiovascular event is the reciprocal of the ARR, which is 100 divided by 5%, or 1 divided by 0 0.05, depending on how you're uh, using your risk in terms of percentages or decimals, which is now 20. The relative risk of having a cardiovascular event in patients on statin compared to without is the ART divided by the ARC. The ART is 15% over the ARC, which is 20%, so that's 75%. And the relative risk reduction of having a CV event in patients on a statin is 100% minus the relative risk, which is 100 minus 75, which is 25%. So I hope that has helped in the context of how to extrapolate risk from a Cates plot if you're interested in um, learning more about how to approach the statistics aspect, then do think about uh, signing up to the online seminar, uh, which you can do through the website. It's a lecture, virtual lecture undertaken by me, similar questions around risk and uh, explanations and questions and answers all facilitated through. Uh, in addition, uh, do sign up to the support group. Uh, links are down below and hope you find the resources there useful. Keep safe and catch up soon. Many thanks for listening in. Bye.